Good evening and welcome to The Big Fight, a show that is young at 23, the oldest running debate show on Indian news television. I am Sankir Tupati. We are debating two issues tonight. Debate number one, the Bharatiya Janata Party has unleashed its mission Gujarat and has hit top gear. And the Prime Minister is the campaigning phase, 25 rallies. Eight days the Prime Minister will camp in Gujarat starting the 17th of November. One rally each for three constituencies, 40 star campaigns. Now, how should one view this? Is this a sign of nervousness, given that there is a new challenger, the Aam Admi Party? Or perhaps the Congress is low-key campaigning. Remember, this is not the Congress which is saying this. The Prime Minister acknowledged that the Congress must not be written off. The BJP is also battling a 27-year-old anti-incumbent. Or... Whether it is nervousness or is this just the BJP style? Their way of going into a contest. 100% full throttle blitzkrieg mode towards the end. We'll put this to a debate. Nervous or confident? Also on the show, we debate the fallout of the big decision by the Supreme Court. Rajiv Gandhi's killers will now walk free. Parties in Tamil Nadu say it is only natural this happened. The Gandhi seem to have forgiven the killers but what explains their own party, the Congress, taking a divergent view on this? In fact, one of those rare moments where the BJP and the Congress are on one side and the Congress speaking against the Gandhi. So we are going to put that to debate in about 30 minutes from now. But let's begin with our discussion. Number one, I would like to introduce uh, the BJ, uh, the Aam Admi Party's uh, Gujarat co-in-charge, Raghav Chadda first. Thank you very much, Raghav, for joining us. What do you make of the Prime Minister, you know, this, this big uh, blitzkrieg mode that the BJP is now entering into? 25 rallies, 8 days camping in Gujarat, uh, one rally for three constituencies. Well, I think uh, the fact that the BJP has to put so many of its resources, so many of its uh, star campaigners, including... Uh, you know, days and days that the Prime Minister is going to give to the state in the run-up to the elections for his party's election campaign goes to show that the BJP is quite frankly on a very weak footing uh, in the upcoming Gujarat polls. And their principal challenger this time in the 2022 Gujarat elections is the Aam Aadmi Party. For the last few months, Aam Aadmi Party and its leaders have been tirelessly working on the ground, building a robust organization, putting up a campaign and reaching every household of Gujarat with Kejriwal ki guarantees, which are uh, concrete promises which will lead to economic upliftment of an average Gujarati household. And I think it's it's primarily because of the kind of response uh, that Aam Aadmi Party is getting, the kind of momentum and traction that we have behind us and, and quite frankly, the overwhelming sense of Parivartan, that is change in the state, uh, you know, the change in the administration, change in the political party that's at the helm of affairs, which has essentially compelled the Prime Minister and his entire team to spend uh, so much of their time in the state in their run-up to the elections. But, you know, Raghav, uh, one way to look at this is that this is BJP style. We've seen this happen in the past, whether it is a greater Hyderabad uh, municipal election or a Delhi municipal election or a, a, you know any any other election, uh, the BJP goes full throttle. So would you view this as just a sign of their confidence and strategy or nervousness? Well, I would certainly look at this as their nervousness because otherwise BJP is a pretty scientifically uh, uh, driven election machine. They concentrate in areas and they concentrate in states depending on what the surveys in the run-up to the elections are showing. So clearly, if the BJP is required to put so much of its might uh, in the fag end of the Gujarat election, it goes to show that uh, their surveys are predicting, what our surveys are predicting, which is that Aam Aadmi Party is inching ahead of uh, the BJP in the state of Gujarat, which has essentially now become a two-cornered contest. Uh, BJP versus Aam with Congress, Congress completely uh, out of the <laughs> contest, out of the race. Oh, you've completely written off Congress. But, you know, since we are talking about the BJP, uh, would you not acknowledge that here is a party which has uh, 
removed 38 of its sitting MLAs. This includes former chief minister, deputy chief minister, in a bloodless coup. Not a, not a little squeak also of complaint. Does this not mean organizational strength? Well, <clears throat> number one, it is BJP's internal matter. It's purely their internal matter. And I don't wish to comment on how they should have driven their campaign and who should have found mention in their list. However, what it does certainly show to me as a political analyst, as a st student of political science and not merely as their political adversary, is huge anti-incumbency, which has led to, you know, mercilessly, uh, uh, you know, tickets being cut of senior most leaders, former chief ministers, deputy chief ministers, etc. being compelled not to contest uh, the, the upcoming election. I mean, no chief minister or deputy chief minister would not want to contest. Everybody wishes to be an elected representative for as long as they're alive. So the fact that they have not chosen not to contest or announced not to contest essentially means that uh, their name has been struck off from the list. And it stems from the fact that there's a very strong resentment against the BJP and people on the streets when you walk around Gujarat and not just one particular area of Gujarat, whether it's North Gujarat, Southern Gujarat, Saurashtra, wherever you go, people are yearning for change and people are saying that we want to throw this corrupt and arrogant regime out of power. And, you know, for 27 long years, the BJP has been essentially at the helm of affairs simply because there was no one in the state that could pose a challenge to the BJP. And simply because Aam Aadmi Party is there now, which is not going to take it, li you know, li lying low, isn't going to give the BJP a walkover like the Congress used to. Uh, but they are now compelled to even, you know, cut tickets of their senior most and the uh, 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 tallest leaders in the state. All right, Raghav Chadda, many thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you so much. Let me now quickly go across to our uh, guests and open this up for a debate. Lalita Kumara Manglam, member of the BJP. Sanjay Kumar is a sophologist and professor at CSDS. Ajay Umat, group editor of Ahmedabad Mirror and Nav Gujarat Samay. Rohan Gupta uh, is the spokesperson of the Congress Party, chairman of the social media department. Deepal Trivedi, a senior journalist joining us from Gujarat. And uh, Puneet Juneja, spokesperson of the Aam Aadmi Party. Thank you very much to all of you. Let's begin with what we call is the first punch, one minute time for your opening comments. And since we are talking about the BJP, Ms. Lalita Kumara Manglam, your time begins now. Okay, one minute will pay short, so I'll just rush through it. Um, I think the AAP is tilting at windmills. The BJP has always said the party first, uh, nation first, party next and self last. You're right uh, that in we've always uh, brought in new blood. And this is exactly what has happened with uh, the candidates for this election. We have the right to change our candidates as we think will do best for both the party and the state. Mr. Uh, Modi, people seem to forget, is actually from Gujarat. He was CM for there for many years. He has an emotional connect with the people there. He has an emotional connect across the country, but especially Gujarat. He's the son of that soil. Uh, and we always have a blitzkrieg before elections, as you rightly pointed out, Sanket, everywhere. Now, um, uh, uh, it's uh, like the pot calling the kettle black when Arp says corrupt and arrogant. Look what's happening in Delhi with them. For them, it is a question of almost desperation. If they lose Gujarat this time, they're going to lose pretty badly. Uh, it's going to be very, very difficult for them to face the public. Now, uh, I, I think he's also forgotten the Gujar uh, uh, Gujarat's history. There was a very, very strong Congress Party organization at one time before the BJP came in. Now, uh, whether it's okay. going to be a walkover for the ARP or not, we'll see in results today. Sure. Now, uh, I don't think one should expect that our senior leaders will not yeah, vote Lalita for Gujarat. You know, I, I, I'm going to come back Both to you. Both Modiji and Amitji are from there and yeah, we always well, put our best foot forward. Okay, I'm going to come back to you and you can elaborate further. But uh, uh, Rohan Gupta, I mean, you know, uh, your opening comments and then I'll, I'll ask you a question. A lot has been said about the Congress party. That where is the campaigning? See, uh, Sanket, I was really surprised with BJP's tall claims of more than 150 seats till now. And today when I heard Mr. Raghav Chadda, I think when we call BJP A team and Aam Admi B team, in terms of marketing, I think we are not wrong. Sanket, uh, Gujarat has seen 27 years of misrule of uh, uh, BJP. And the Morbi incident was the final nail in coffin as far as the people of Gujarat are concerned. Because kind of confidence what they had on Mr. is shattered. 
even after 10 days no action has been taken on the real culprits and the way bjp had changed around 39 of their mls it clearly shows that what is the strong anti incumbency on the ground they had to replace the ex cm they had to uh, replace ex deputy cm the whole at least 10 ministers were not given ticket why this so because before four years they replaced the whole government because of the covid uh, mismanagement people are not happy and now when at the pageant of the election they know that on ground their situation is really bad and congress is being told to talk with their vachan aunt vachan and they are getting tremendous response from the people aam aadmi is absolutely okay. over and people like uttarakhand and Goa, they will be vote okay. katua party you seem to be losing your audio uh, mr gupta i am going to come back to you puneet juneja yes <clears throat> your opening comments please uh sanket uh, gujarat has seen 27 years of anti incumbency this anti incumbency is not only with regards to the ruling party uh, bjp as a ruling party has failed the state uh, even the congress as an opposition could not uh, give as an opposition what it should have given to the people of gujarat they never tried to replace bjp even in 2017 when they were in such a strong position when they had 77 uh, mlas uh, elected and very they were by very few margin they had uh, lost on certain seats today they are left with only 61 or 60 of those mlas rest of them have already migrated to bjp now i am using this term migration because uh, uh, defection is uh, no longer a bad word for uh, bjp and congress now when they say a team or b team they have to first uh, introspect that who has been selling their mlas or whose mlas are being sold out be it goa be it other states and be it gujarat now uh, for what aam aadmi party has come to the state with it okay. is not that aam aadmi party has not proven its uh, track record aam aadmi party has sure. in fact uh, shown a very okay. good result okay okay one, one, one minute time elections. is up mr junej i am going to come back to you yes yeah, sure. uh, deepal trivedi opening comment yes uh first of all i would want to say that the aam aadmi party has been giving a very spirited fight in gujarat and uh, it is aam aadmi party's entry that has made this assembly elections very interesting and exciting but on the other hand it is also their overconfidence that is very starting because uh, all said and done though the aam aadmi party has been very aggressive has taken to the street they lack a local cadre which is reflected it is also reflected in their choice of candidates but at the same time i would want to say that even if the aam aadmi party does not make any commendable or any very overwhelming victories these elections it is going to leave behind a very impressive vote share that is going to reflect i think that's a very important point years. and and while they do that while they do that uh, sanjay kumar there is a very important and pertinent question on on uh, uh, what this is going to do to the congress's vote share and if there is this split then are we going to see perhaps i don't know as some analysts say the best ever bjp performance because you will have a vertical split in the opposition uh i would be one of those analysts who would agree with this view that bjp may be heading for this biggest victory in gujarat not because that bjp's government is being appreciated by the people of gujarat but only because there is a vertical split between in the votes of anti bjp votes between aam aadmi party and congress uh, i think the limited interest in the limited interest i have in gujarat election is uh, who is going to be number 2 and who is going to be number 3 so there is a keen contest for number 2 and number 3 position i think the verdict is clear to me that it is a bjp's victory in gujarat the only issue is how big is going to be the bjp's victory okay uh, ajay umat i know you have you have been saying this for a very long time mr ajay umat uh <laughs> and and you you were the first one on indi tv to have come up with the the gandhi nagar theory uh, yes do you subscribe to this view and what do you what do you make of this uh, very strong campaigning plan of the bjp part of the I plan or nervousness professor 
I am happy that Deepal and Professor Sanjay Gupta is endorsing my theory. But having said that, you know, there is no emotional wave this time, you know, that we had seen in 2002 election post Gudra riots or in 2007 when Sonia Gandhi said that Modi is Motka Sodagar or in 2012 when, you know, Modi uh, as CM of Gujarat was likely to become chief uh, prime minister of India. And in 2017, there were three agitations by Hardik Patel and Jignes Mehwani and Alpesh Thakur. This time, you know, BJP is managing its electioneering management in such a manner that BJP will get majority with Congress turncoats because there are 19 turncoats of Congress party to whom BJP has taken in their first list because BJP wants to election this uh, wants to get uh, maximum seat in this election by hook or crook. And that's the reason that, you know, uh, so many Congress MLS were accommodated, accommodated in their list. So winnability, winnability and winnability with Modi's charisma, one man. So that is the only criteria that BJP has adopted at this point of time. They have balanced caste equation, communal equations, uh, uniform civil code to, uh, you know, illegal encroachment, uh, abolishment, everything, whatever. Okay. Trades of the trick BJP has adopted to win this election with maximum seats. Okay. So uh, Lalita Kumara Mangalam, just coming back to you. Uh, you have heard the analysts over here who feel that the BJP is not going to win because of its uh, grand stellar work or that it has been able to buck anti-incumbency. You are going to have uh, perhaps the best win and you know we, none of us should be Nostradamus right now. The best possible win according to the analysts simply because of a completely fractured uh, vote share among the two opposition players. Aam Admi Party will not be strong enough and the Congress will not be so weak. Sanket, elections are fought to be won. Uh, it sounds, uh, you know, I don't want to sound harsh. I'm not somebody who goes overboard in using, uh, in being, uh, using harsh words. But the people who are going to lose normally always find excuses for why the other person has won. The point is that we have an extraordinarily strong organization, not just in, in Gujarat, but also in Gujarat. We have the PM from there. Uh, we have been there in power for 27 years. It's, it sounds ridiculous when you say they've had 27 years of anti-incumbency. How have we been in power then? Uh, we will win these elections. Uh, again, as the gentleman who spoke before me, Mr. Ajay Umar said, it's about what the gap may be, who sec takes second place, third place. It's not for us to worry. It's for ARP and Congress to worry. Um, and uh, we've always done a blitzkrieg. We know we are going to win. Yes, there have been uh, many sh uh, new people who have been brought in. But again, that's also quite like the BJP. Who thought in before 2014 that Narendra Modi would actually win uh, twice, back to back, uh, and become Prime Minister of India, not just for one term. People are expecting him to win again in 2024. So election, nothing in life stands still. Nothing is static. Uh, we know that we are going to win. Yes, there have been problems, there have been ups and downs, but that goes for politics just as much as it goes for life, uh, in anybody's lives and in any party. The, uh, there was a time when nobody could defeat the Congress, hmm. but then look where the Congress is now. So ups and downs are always there. The coming okay. elections Rohan, in Rohan Gujarat, Gupta. the BJP will win. Rohan Gupta, and whatever so reasons Lalita are there, and, the, and, stones are there, and the many panelists it. over here feel that don't read too much into this blitzkrieg. It's not because of any nervousness. This is just BJP. BJP ka style hai. This is their style. Okay. And then questions are asked on why are you creating this space in Gujarat? You know, you see the Congress party has been a very strong opposition. It's not like for 27 years, no opposition ex existed. I mean, the, when the, the former chief minister, Naren Modi, when he was the chief minister, even then, 70, 70 odd MLAs the Congress always used to get. Then, Did then it, what? Sir. Where is your campaign? Why, why are you not building up? Some and do you think this it, argument uh, of low key campaign is going to work, Mr. Gupta? Low key. No, what is low yeah. key? I, I will tell you, Sanket. See, एक कहावत है हिंदी में कि जब आप जनता को हलके में लेते हैं, जनता आपको चमत्कार दिखाती है. और यही गुजरात में I tell you, Sanket, I, it reminds me of 2017. All debates during this time, maximum seats given to Congress party were not more than 36 seats. I am telling you, I have all those surveys and all. Uh -huh. See, the ground level situation, Sanket, because I am from Gujarat, number one is what people think, whatever analysis we do. People but Mr. Gupta, are there was no Aam Aadmi Party then. Sanket, let me, I am coming to it. I am coming to it. That's what I am saying. When there was no Aam Aadmi Party, it was told that we will win only 
30 to 40 seats and we could reach up to 77 seats it is because there is a strong cadre of congress party number one number two the anger compared to 2017 in mind of people of gujarat is much more higher it is multifold and more the incident has you know it has multiplied in mind of people where after 10 days they have not taken any action when it comes to opposite like i was listening to aam aadmi party also surprisingly whatever your analysts are saying mark my words today's debate that aam aadmi party will damage bjp more when the results will come oh, why i'm saying i tell you why, i'll tell why, you why why do you come to this conclusion I, I, i'll give you the example i'll give you surat like surat is one place where aam aadmi party has given the candidates like gopal italia or past uh, convener alpesh kathiria and all who are considered to be strong candidates surat uh, congress has never won any seats even their so called cm candidate even now he is not able to find the perfect constituency or a safe constituency where he can win the elections sanket gujarat is a state where assemblies <laughs> are of the size of 2.5 lakh to 3 lakh voters unless and until you have strong candidates who can go and take mites of existing mlas whether it is congress or bjp yes you can be a vote katwa party but the kind of you know claims which are made by aam aadmi party they are not going to be successful Number okay one. very Number very interesting but rohan gupta has made a very very interesting point ajay umar as well as deepal trivedi one by one yeah that that is can ranke last point about congress campaign congress ke aath vachan what this time we have done sanket we have talked we have spoken to lot of lots of people and we have identified eight key points whether it is old pension scheme giving a uh, gas bottle in 500 rupees specific points touching specific gujarati people okay, okay fine got, ajay uh, ajay umar and sanjay kumar do you uh, feel so, that the congress's uh, assessment is correct the congress's assessment is correct that the aam aadmi party will actually damage the bjp more than the congress party or is it the other way around no sanket what if there is a fresh gupta, allegation from the bjp that aap is congress's b team no what what rohan gupta is saying is right to an extent that in surat yes in surat uh, old part kaprada or ne old part then katar gaon kalanj varacha varacha and uh, surat north and surat east these are five seats you know where alpes kathiria and surathia and gopal italia are contesting yes they will do better and i think they will give direct fight to bharatiya janata party but that's the only urban pocket where aam aadmi party is giving a direct so fight to bharatiya janata party so it's not a pan gujarat experience this is yeah. limited to surat surat and i'll i'll give you one more example in last municipal corporation election Congress party reduced from 36 to 0 and Aam Aadmi party got from 0 to 27 so this is that varacha pocket the varacha pocket you know where alpes kathiria and all this patel anamat andolan samiti is epicenter you know where uh, all those patels migrated from saurashtra to surat mainly in that diamond cutting business you know they will be voting for Aam Aadmi party yes that is their strong pocket but barring that you know in amdavad baroda surat amdavad baroda rajkot and in other, in other park, urban pockets i don't think that you know they can cut eyes or they can cut votes of bjp sanket in last elections you know out of 55 urban seats metro seats amdavad baroda surat and rajkot bjp got 44 seats that shows that their their strike rate in urban area is more than 80% whereas in rural area out of 127 congress got 70 seats so congress may be focusing in rural and tribal area Hmm. whereas you know in urban area out of you know but that has always been the case mr omar you know, rural and yeah? uh, tribal has been uh, sort of a strength of the congress in gujarat no tribal means when i say tribal i mean banaskatha sabarkatha dahod panchmal chota udaipur rajpipla vyara bharuj sonagarh that you know tribal belt where you know once upon a time bilistan idea was you know promoted by meeda patkar and others so that is an area adjoining to rajasthan madhya pradesh and going towards maharashtra hmm. so that uh, seats i am talking which is 46 seats so in those areas you know congress is very very strong where you know bharatiya janata party is trying to break you know for example i'll give you an example bhavesh katara and his father jalod seat that comes under dahod district chota udaipur you know mohan rathwa he joined uh, bharatiya janata party and within one day bjp has given ticket to his son 
though the bjp stated policy is that you know we don't believe in parivarvad but bhavesh katara son of uh, uh, senior katara who was ex parliament member was given a seat and they okay. are still waiting they are still they have vacated a seat in dedia pada sure. to Uh, to you know break this father and son you uh, know uh, ajay uh, umar's uh, <laughs> extremely granular uh, analysis of gujarat <laughs> No, uh, no. I, I am giving uh, a BTP, BTP party. One, one, one moment. You know, because we are talking about the Aam Aadmi Party, I'll come to Sanjay Kumar also because we are talking about the Aam yes. Aadmi Party. Mr. Juneja, who will you damage more, or are we to expect uh, Aam Aadmi Party in Gujarat in 2022 to do what Aam Aadmi Party did in Punjab in 2017? That you fought an election to not basically win, but to just create a a base. and this is actually election. this is actually your gujarat foray for 2027 sanket elections are always fought to be won aam aadmi party has been discounted right from its inception even in 2012 when the party was formed it was told that it is a party of one person two people five people and they are they they, they call themselves party they don't have no, a cadre no sir the, the reason all why the, this is said because the, where is your cadre where is your booth it, level worker karyakarta congress boasts of every and, time an organization time, Yes, every time, be it Delhi election, be it Punjab elections, be it Gujarat elections, be it Surat elections, when we fought the corporation elections, every time uh, we have been discounted, saying that you don't have a cadre, you don't have. Uh, but if you uh, try to understand the way the Aam Aadmi Party has come up, hmm. Sanket, this is a political party which has come up on the issues of people, right? we have not uh, we have not uh, we have not been like a traditional political party uh, you know di- dividing people on basis of caste hmm. religion or anything we talk about class a class of common people common man aam okay. aadmi when we talk about aam aadmi uh, we talk about their issues like their education their healthcare sure. transportation their uh, uh, you know uh, growth uh, overall sure. okay. growth okay 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 let me let me bring in uh, uh, professor sanjay kumar Professor Kumar, just a short while ago, uh, a comment was made on how the attempt is to basically break the Congress Party, try to enter into the tribal belt, uh, try to enter into the Congress strongholds, and also a discussion around who will be able to do it better. Uh, will the Aam Aadmi Party damage the BJP more or the Congress more? This is all analysis. I mean, ultimately, the result will speak for itself. And the other point that was made was. how the bjp yes. got 19 turn coats from the congress into their fold with the intention to basically you know break into those congress fortresses uh, sanket i i don't have a clear answer to the second question how bjp managed to you know bring these 19 you know ex congressmen to their fold yeah. but let me focus more on Uh, which party aam aadmi party is going to damage more i think i yeah. think i'm very very clear that aam aadmi party is damaging the congress more not the bjp uh, two there are two evidences uh, one we have done a study and we saw that it very clearly aam aadmi party is sitting with roughly about 20 25% vote um, congress is also sitting with 20 22% vote so congress from its 41 42% vote is going down and all these vote mostly 90% of these votes are getting transferred to aam aadmi party so i have an evidence based on which i am i i am saying that aam aadmi party is damaging the congress not the bjp no but this is Second massive evidence professor what has kumar happened because in if Delhi, this we have ha- all seen professor kumar if what you are yes. saying is true then this is massive then ideally if you transfer this into seats this would translate to uh, something about 140 or 145 uh, seats this sort of vote share for the bjp for bjp yeah for bjp for the bjp yes that is why i in the opening uh, statement i said that bjp then? may be heading for his yes that is what i said in the beginning uh, but remember uh, the se- the second point i w- the second evidence is what has happened in delhi we have all seen when aam aadmi party has come to power in 2013 2015 and 2020 what has happened to the congress look at what has happened to congress in punjab so it is very clear that aam aadmi party has more or less the same support base which congress had so if aam aadmi party is going up it is the congress which goes down so it's a lateral second transfer point about bjp from yes, congress aam to aam aadmi party, aam aadmi party of the aam aadmi party will no aam aadmi party will definitely get some votes or sizable number of votes in the urban areas but that will not damage the bjp in terms of seats because 
BJP has almost 15-16% lead over Congress in the urban areas. Mm. So even if Amami party manages to snatch votes from BJP, Very that may not damage BJP in terms of number of seats. Because BJP has a huge margin over Congress. Okay. In the so, urban, so, in the so, urban uh, Rohan Gupta and then Deepal Trivedi. Mr. Gupta, do you feel that uh, this is then a part of a strategy? I mean, will you then accuse the Aam Aadmi Party of being B-team uh, and, and this, this whole campaigning blitzkrieg perhaps a part of a big strategy of putting in, going in full throttle with campaigning, also doing this micromanagement and then as the Congress always accuses the Aam Aadmi Party uh, of unleashing a B-team so that you tend to weaken. Basic, basic objective was that only. But the way this election is turning out, again I am repeating, I am not saying just as a Congress spokesperson. If you see on ground, the constituency in Gujarat, unlike Delhi or Punjab, they are two to three times bigger than what they are in Punjab and Delhi. Now, after Amadmi party's candidates are declared, right, they created this euphoria when uh, Mr. Kejriwal was here in terms of media, this thing and all. People vote for candidates. Now, if you ask anybody in Gujarat, you know, number of candidates which are declared by Aam Aadmi Party, they are not the people who can go to the people and, you know, when you are saying the splitting of opposition votes, no, that's not going to happen. Mark my words. If you have seen Uttarakhand, you have seen Himachal Pradesh, you have seen Goa, that Aam Aadmi Party had remained in that margin of particular percentage and there, that is where Gujarat is different because Gujarat is the first urban state Majorly, Gujarat is the urban state that BJP is in power. That's why I'm saying, now, after declaration of Delhi elections, the might of Aam Aadmi Party has shifted only to Surat, where there are at least four or five candidates where people know. Apart from that, even again, I'm repeating that so-called CM candidate is not able to announce the constituency. Mm. So mark my words, maybe that original strategy was there to split the uh, opposition votes, but it is going to backfire as so, far as... So many Uttar times Pratap in this program, you have said, mark my words, I am going to truly mark this. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we'll have a discussion on the 8th of December. Sanket, so I many times Mr. Gupta is. has told us, mark my words. So we have sure. officially Sanket. marked yeah, today. Can I just <laughs> make... Yes, one, yeah, one, one moment. Ms. Kumara Manglam, yeah. uh, Deepal Trivedi. I yeah. Completed. Okay. Yeah, yeah, can Mr. I Gupta, start? quickly. Yeah, so again... It is said that Congress campaign is low-key. No, it's not low-key. When Mr. Rahul Gandhi started Bharat Jodo Yatra, before that we had one rally in Ahmedabad where lakhs of people were there. Mr. Modi did that Sabha three days back. Three times the people what Mr. Modi uh, Sabha had, we had three times. Number sure. one. Number two, as far as our Kedar is concerned, Sanket, 1.5 crore households we have done door-to-door -door campaign about our eight vachans. Our candidates, they are on ground. The kind of candidates what Congress has declared, I think Ajay, okay. we will appreciate the... the Deepal Trivedi, fine, we got your point. Deepal Trivedi and then... Uh, this is the first time that Congress party has declared the number of candidates in advance sure. without any Ms. kind of issues Ms. after declaration. We will see the difference. Ms. Trivedi. I would, uh, uh, Sanket, I would uh, go with uh, Professor Kumar that Aam Admi party is going to damage the Congress more than the BJP, if not decimate it in these elections. And to BJP's credit, you know, BJP is known for taking every election very seriously in Gujarat, even if it's a small ward or a small Nagar Palika election. BJP is known for its booth management, for its page promo, for micromanaging. So an assembly election is no exception. So people uh, outside Gujarat, you know, trying to uh, focus on this point of uh, Prime Minister Modi paying so much attention to Gujarat. But this is expected and this has always been the trend of BJP. Hmm. There definitely is anti-incumbency in Gujarat. But And Rohan pointed out, you know, he mentioned the Morbi tragedy Correct. thrice. Correct. Correct. But then okay. this is the problem with Congress, that why is it that they always have to depend on natural or man-made disasters? We have been seeing it from 2001, the Gujarat earthquake, the demonetization, the GST, 2002, a lot of events, but still BJP has managed to get back into power. Okay. It is Lale, Lale, Lalita Kumar Manglam. Yeah, the whole uh, uh, comparison Last of Punjab and Gujarat is quite ludicrous. Punjab, there was no BJP almost in the election. Hmm. 
uh, we really didn't fight that election to win it. We knew we are no, I mean, we are nowhere in Punjab. And Punjab is a very small state. This has been said by many of the others in this mm. debate. Punjab is a very small state. Congress was in such an utter mess. We know what happened in, in Punjab, but that's done and dusted. Let's not uh, go on about that. The fact no, is when I made that, that comment, Ms. Kumara Mangalam, I basically meant no, that no, no, you I'm fight an election to create, a, no, no, to create a base. And then once your yeah. cadre is built, then you fight perhaps after five years that's to true. win. That's true of any party, Sanke. Don't hmm. forget that the BJP, uh, we built our base for 70 years before we really made a show, um, was strong enough to take on even the, okay. uh, the principal party, which is then the Congress. But that's yeah. not the point. The point is that, yes, after 27 years, there's bound to be a certain amount of anti incumbency for any party. And it's mm. therefore in certain parts in Gujarat. But despite everything, we are confident of winning. Okay. What will happen to the Congress and the uh, AAP? That's their business. I'm okay. not going to get into okay. that. But okay. we know we that we are going to win. We have pulled sure. out the stops. Modi ji will ensure and so will every organization man in sure. the BJP sure. top sure. to bottom will ensure that as we Mr. Gujarat. Rohan Gupta said mark my words so we are marking everybody's words <laughs> thank you very much for yes, this thank first you. discussion we are stopping for a short break at this thank moment you. thank you ladies and gentlemen when we come back we will talk about the big decision by the Supreme Court Rajiv Gandhi's killers will now walk free all parties in Tamil Nadu are saying that this is natural the Gandhis have for forgiven the killers but one really does not know what explains that the Gandhi's party, the Congress party and the BJP are now on one side in opposing it. They feel that you cannot be forgiving terrorists who have been found guilty of murdering a former Prime Minister. That debate up there. We have with us Rakesh Devedi, Senior Advocate of the Supreme Court, N. Ram, Director of the Hindu Publishing Group. Ramchandra Rao is uh, from the BJP. Uh, Mr. Pogoyendi, National Spokesperson of the AIA DMK. Uh, Dr. S. Hafizullah, DMK Spokesperson. And we also have Manikam B. Tagore, Lok Sabha MP of the Congress Party. Thank you very much, uh, all of you. First of all, the legal view. Mr. Devedi, I want to know from you, uh, how, how, does this, how does this sit? If you could explain for the benefit of our viewers, uh, what were the arguments that the Supreme Court heard post which this decision was taken? The logic See, basically. Uh, when the first round of litigation happened before a five judges constitution bench some four or five years back, then uh, an issue had arisen uh, on account of uh, the union challenging a notice issued by the government of Tamil Nadu which required them to take a call about release within a specified time. So the Supreme Court in that case had held that though it, uh, all other offenses which were involved, the sentences have been served out, only section 302 IPC remained with respect to which life imprisonment had been uh, granted to these uh, convicts. So, the state of Tamil Nadu had full jurisdiction to grant release to them. Now, in that context, subsequently, as we know that in Tamil Nadu, the general perception amongst the public and in the legislative assembly, a unanimous resolution had been passed. So, finally, the government seems to have taken a decision that they should be released. But the governor refused to sign it and he sent the matter to the union government for its decision. Now that was again a matter of challenge in Parari Valens case some four or five months back. And in that it was held by the Supreme Court that once the, the cabinet has taken a decision then the governor has no discretion left except to sign it and he had no business to forward the matter to the union government. And even otherwise, public order is in list two of the seven schedules. So, with respect to 302, it is the state government alone which has to take a decision, not the union. Mm. So, union has no role to play. Now, that decision has not been challenged either by any political party or the Congress party or the Gandhi family or the union government. Subsequently, no review, etc. has been filed. So, the matter rested there that the cabinet has taken a decision to release. And uh, since the government of Tamil Nadu has taken a decision, 
the government, the Supreme Court itself directed under uh, Article 142 that since they have served for more than 30 years in the jail, okay. it serves no purpose in keeping them now in jail. Now, okay. following that precedent, today the remaining six accused, uh, the convicts, they also filed and they were also granted similar relief. And I do not understand why there should be so much hue and cry about it. Because although uh, he was a tall leader and uh, this kind of assassinations are uh, to be deprecated and nobody can take a light stand and 30 years is not a small time, a small period. Hmm. Now if you recollect that long time back when Mahatma Gandhi was assassinated, then Gopal Godse who had got a life imprisonment, then all the family members of the Gandhi Mahatma Gandhi, they had written to Jawaharlal Nehru to release them. The ultimately, matter went to Supreme Court. In 1961, the Supreme Court said that only the government can release, not the court. Correct. And finally, within three years, the government released. Okay, so okay. I, I, I get the point that you're trying to make, but Mr. N. Ram, Ram you Gandhi see... Is not a taller leader than Mahatma Gandhi, if he could be released in 16 years. Hmm. I'm sure 30 years is a double the time. What's the sense in keeping them in, especially when Priyanka Gandhi has visited the Nalini and the jail? And so I think the broad consensus is, and the human rights require that such a long incarceration. Yeah, while while, while while I while, while I agree with the, and and I don't dispute your facts, but you see, Mr. N. Ram, here we are talking about the assassination of a former prime minister, and the view generally of the Congress party, not the family, of the Congress party is that convicted terrorists, people who have been convicted of assassinating a former prime minister, when they will be let off, then there will be a precedent. And how does the court then intend to uh, answer these, these contradictions? Um, Ankit, I, I used to believe that in cases like this, life means life. but. Uh, I am persuaded by what the uh, senior counsel has just explained. Uh, I don't think it will set a precedent in the sense that every person who, who uh, uh, approaches the court uh, will get relief because it depends on, in a sense, on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, the satisfactory con con conduct in this long incarceration in the law, and then whether they've done something to improve their capabilities, whether they've contributed something in the creative space and so on. So I think the court will look at those things as well. But the point here is, the two main political parties are united in this uh, in the state, are very clear that uh, the time has come for them to be released. And secondly, I think that's very, very important. The governor had no business just keeping it in his pocket or in his table for such a long period. That I think is a factor that must be taken into account. And then to send it to the wrong address instead of acting I think is completely unacceptable and I think this is a blow, a small blow for uh, what the constitution uh, uh, give, give, you know, empowers the states to do. Uh, one of the few, few things that have happened in favor of state rights is this, that the governor, who in the, in the case of Tamil Nadu, he has been holding several bills, uh, you, know, you know, just blocking them, then what, uh, what respect does the state legislature have or the executive in the state? Which is, uh, Mr. Enram, would you not like to make a distinction between the other bills being held up by the governor, uh, allegedly, and something as serious as this? Because while you say that state uh, political parties are united uh, in, in favoring this decision, you've got the two national parties that are uh, dead opposed to what has happened in the Supreme Court. Yeah, they have the least stake because they are my very minor players in the state of Tamil Nadu. Uh, uh, and uh, I really appreciate the uh, what Priyanka Gandhi did. I, you know, I was of the view earlier, life is life for, the, for a heinous of a, uh, offense, uh, uh, no, assassination, not just murder, mm. uh, or something. It changed the course of Indian politics. So I was of that view, but looking all, taking all things into consideration, I think they've done right. Uh, public sentiment is also in favor of this. These people, you know, it is really justice tempered by mercy, uh, and the Supreme Court, I think, has got it right. Okay. Okay, Ram Chandra Rao of the Bharatiya Janata Party. How do you view this uh, decision? 
I mean, this is as Mr. N. Ram said, as uh, Rakesh Divedi said, and I'm sure uh, uh, DMK and ADMK spokespersons are also going to uh, echo the same sentiment. But how do you look at this decision? We've all heard what the Congress's view is. Mr. Ram Chandra Rao. Yeah, sir. The, in fact, uh, this is a uh, as just now Mr. Ram said uh, that uh, this is a, a legal decision tempered with humanity or uh, public sentiment, whatever it may be. But it is one of the rarest cases that the Supreme Court has come uh, taken such a decision where uh, uh, people who are accused of killing the Prime Minister and indulging in a terrorist activity are being let off. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, uh, the courts have uh, time and again cleared it. Life means life. But under what circumstances they have been left? In fact, this is a case where Honorable Prime Minister of this country had been assassinated and a lot of people, other people have died in this case. So the, even the, those sentiments are also necessary to look after uh, when such a decision is taken. Now, the also fact remains that the family member of uh, Sri Rajiv Gandhi, late Sri Rajiv Gandhi, met uh, the assassins and they were also very sympathetic with them. But however, that should not have... Uh, you know, influence the court while taking a decision. I think uh, law for everyone should be one and law for terrorists should be firm in this country. Otherwise, uh, there will not be any deterrent. Uh, and that's what I feel that maybe it is special power used by Supreme Court to not go into it. But as far as the uh, leaving of some terrorists uh, by the court uh, in such a serious matter, I think it is a matter to have a concern to think over. The baby sentiment and other things may, have, may stand in its own place. But I don't think that law should also be so sympathetic to the people uh, who have killed the Prime Minister and who have, and actually who had uh, participated in the terrorist activities. Prashant Pratap Singh, I want to come to you now and I want to ask you, how does it sit within your party that the Congress tall leadership, the, the High Command or the Gandhis, have another view and your party has another view? Are they not the party? How is it that you have been able to make this distinction within your party on what is the Gandhi's view and what is the Congress party's view? The party is very clear on, uh, and we have released a statement. It clearly says the decision of the Supreme Court to free the remaining killers for former Prime Minister Sri Rajiv Gandhi is totally unacceptable and completely erroneous. The Congress party criticizes it clearly and finds it wholly untenable. So. So when we talk about the Gandhi, it's, it's very personal to them. It's a personal space. That's, that's the uh, feeling they had. But not to forget, Sri, as you mentioned, Rajiv Gandhi is a previous prime minister. He was murdered in uh, cold blood. And, and, this, and this is a terrorist act. Just think about it. If this was uh, Kasab. And in, in, in case of Kasab, would we be talking about retributive and not reformative uh, sentence? They have been released, in, okay, after 30 years, but their sentences have been, and the Supreme Court has used Article 4, 142, which we don't agree with. It gives them the power, discretionary power, to release these convicts. But why they, they now, this is a, the precedent which they are setting is so uh, dangerous. If you look at the facts, the Supreme, the Supreme Court uh, judgment on the, on the assassination case, finally it was ruled that it was not a terrorism offense. Uh, if you look at the judgment now, I just want to recall this, that uh, and they went into it in some detail, what is terrorism? So there also it falls to the ground. It was, it was horrible, it is arguable, I think. I think clearly it was a terrorism offense in a political sense, but yeah, according to the law, if you go back to the judgment, it... Uh, it didn't uh, uh, comply with the requirements uh, uh, to brand it as a terrorism offense. You can check that and our senior counsel may have something to say on, yes, on, on that yes. issue as well. They were acquitted of the charge of terrorism. Yeah. yeah. The so, Ajmal, ke Ajmal, Ajmal case is entirely different. Okay, okay. One moment. Hafizullah yes, wanted yes, to come absolutely. in. Yes, yes. I just want to uh, agree with what uh, Ram sir said. That is what I, I wanted to point out. It is not a terrorism case. It was conducted as a, uh, as a trial for murder. So the, the whole, whole, it is a 3 not 2 It is nothing more. It is a 3 not 2 Let me That is the ground. That is the Let ground me. that the Supreme Court said. That the executive power lies with the 
executive power lies yeah, with the N. Ram, please. N. Mr. Ram wants uh, to come I, in and then I Mr. really Ram. want to place on record my admiration for all members of the immediate Rajiv Gandhi family hmm. for the nobility they have shown in this respect. That's an important part. And the Congress, right. uh, what appears to be a contradiction is really not that. Uh, and that was explained. So I think uh, it was remarkable. It is exceptional, particularly the way Priyanka Gandhi initiated that. And Rahul at one time said, I think, I don't quite, I'm not on the same page or something. But overall, uh, after all, for Nalini's case, the death sentence uh, was commuted after the intervention of Sonia Gandhi. So these are uh, special things in politics. So, so I think that sentiment... That kind of uh, nobility has to be uh, appreciated in this in this context. How would you respond to the Congress My, party, Dr. Yeah. Abhishek Manu Singhvi, saying that this will set a precedent, that even other cases of lesser intensity may use let this me, as an example? Let, let me first of all condemn the, the speaker for using the expression shameful, etc. for the Supreme Court's judgment. It is highly contemptuous, so it's a warning to him. The second thing is, Supreme Court, he should have read the judgments of Perari Walan in this judgment very carefully. Supreme Court has exercised power of 142 only because the cabinet of the government of Tamil Nadu has already taken a decision and they are the authority to take a decision for commutation. And therefore, the Supreme Court said that it is no use sending the matter back because the government has already taken a decision and therefore this. So coming to the third question of precedent. The Congress must first answer why did they left Gopal Godse after 16 years? Was that not a precedent? Fourth point is, every, every case, even if they think that this is terrorism, every case of terrorism is not identical. As Mr. Ram said that you have to go case by case. Here is a case where these are six, seven persons who played a very minor role and some of them are not even aware as to what the other person is doing and what for it is being done. And there, had, there was a particular political background also. The LTT was there at that time as a force which was fighting in Sri Lanka and they were agreed by the IPKF being sent to Sri Lanka. Now they, that LTT has disappeared. All that political background has disappeared. So there was certain uh, element of uh, by which these people may have been uh, got involved into this uh, okay. conspiracy. So therefore this is a case which is of a peculiar kind and it had a particular background and these people are not the main actors and they have suffered enormously by 30 years. There's hardly an incident. Double the time Gopal Godse said spent. So okay. let us not talk about precedent. Precedent was set in 1964, 16 years. Okay. But here it is 30 years. Sure. Okay. Prashant Pratap Singh, uh, uh, Mr. Afisullah, Mr. Pugayendi, Ramchandra Rao, N. Ram as well as Rakesh Dwedi. Many thanks for joining us on this discussion. Thank, Thank you. you so much.